Hey everyone, this is Dr. Casey Johnson. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I know you're going to love today's episode with Kelly Tennant. Kelly is doing some amazing work, so I'm excited to have her on to share a story with you guys. If you've been loving the Unlock Wellness Podcast, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Also, be sure to follow me on social media to keep up with the latest podcast episodes. The best way to connect with me is on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My username across the board is at Dr. Casey Johnson. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. You can also check out my website at drkcjohnson.com. It has all of the past podcast episodes and more information about each guest under the Listen tab. While you're on my site, be sure to check out the shop tab where you can check out my first book of my Healthy Children's Book series. Thank you again for listening. I hope this episode leaves you feeling inspired to start making positive changes to your health. Now it's time for today's episode. I hope you love my conversation with Kelly Tennant. Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey and excited for today's guest. I'm here with Kelly Tennant and Kelly's work is incredible. After dealing with chronic Epstein-Barr virus for years being misdiagnosed, Kelly went on a journey to help her body heal in the most natural ways possible. And in an effort to focus on her healing, she left her successful career in sports broadcasting to focus on her journey and self-love and now hosts Ceremony Wellness Podcast, where she has amazing conversations about health, wellness, and personal development. But I'm excited for Kelly to share her story with you guys and just all of the amazing work that she's doing. So Kelly, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm excited to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Your accent makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm, from West, I'm from West Virginia. <laughs> You're adorable. I love it. <laughs> That's funny. Nobody's told me that in a while. So hey. <laughs> you know, us California people are so boring. We just right. have, we just say like every other word. So you're way cooler. <laughs> Listen, no, I've worked on my life. It's, it's, a, it's a podcaster's journey, right? It, it's true. It's true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. So, you know, we'll start with your backstory. So, you know, before we jump into the amazing work that you're doing right now, uh, you know, first off, where you're from, which I'm guessing is California since it's not West Virginia. Yeah. Be, <laughs> but uh, just, yeah, so where you're from is and just what your health and wellness journey has looked like, like when you were younger growing up. Yeah. So I'm from Temecula, California, which is like halfway between LA and San Diego and inland. So small town and ended up going to USC and played volleyball there. And my, my health journey is interesting. I was always the sick kid growing up. Every month I felt like I was getting a flu or a cold and it hit me pretty hard. And then my senior year of high school, I had pneumonia for about four months. And then wow. my freshman year of college, I had mono for eight months. And so clearly there were red flags and my body was telling me something was up, but I definitely did not listen. I was one of the top volleyball players in the country. So for me, in high school and then going into college, it wasn't really an option to just stop. And anyone that has played, you know, college athletics knows that you just run your body into the ground, no matter what, if, unless you're dying and bleeding to death, you better go. And that's really the mentality I had. And after I came out of the mono and really not able to do anything. I had gained 30 pounds. I felt disgusting. Um, I could barely walk around. I was so tired. I came out of that and got in the best shape of my life. And at the time I was 19 and one day my leg just gave out and went completely numb and dead. And it was dragging behind me. I couldn't stand up straight. I was in extreme pain from head to toe. Couldn't even see straight, had severe brain fog, got really depressed and my whole life just flipped upside down. And I, at the time, was basically bedridden for six months, and I kept seeing all these doctors, and they're world-renowned. I'm at USC. I have access to the best of the best, and no one could figure out what was up and kept getting these tests, and they're like, well, nothing's showing, but maybe it's cancer. Maybe you broke your back. Maybe you tore a disc, and so I was just put on a bunch of pills and given three epidurals in a really short period of time and kind of numbed out. 
And then I came off of that and I just started getting worse and worse and worse. And after six months, I saw a rheumatologist and he said, you have fibromyalgia. I'm sorry, but you're never going to play volleyball again. And this is it. Here's some Lyrica and go on your way. And for those who don't know, Lyrica is a nerve blocker and the most highly used medication for fibromyalgia. And at the time, my family and I didn't know anything else. We had only known Western medicine and we obviously trusted this doctor. And so I had to give up my scholarship and become a normal student and go on with my life, living with chronic pain and not really understanding what it meant. And after two years of being on all these drugs, I was about 21 coming out of college. And I was just like, I can't live like this. This can't be my life at such a young age. And so I got off everything and decided to try the holistic route, which I didn't even know what holistic meant at the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I started doing a ton of research for myself and advocating and looking into using food as medicine. And what were people saying about autoimmune disease and chronic illness and how food affects things? And I started as a vegan and a vegetarian and I took out all alcohol and I spent about four years like that. And I got better at first and then I got worse again because what I didn't realize at the time was that nightshades and grains and nuts and seeds, things that many vegans and plant-based people live off of were actually really inflammatory for me at the time. And I couldn't get to a diet that would work for me until, until I healed my gut. And so I found paleo and then the autoimmune protocol, which really focused on taking out nightshades, nuts, seeds, eggs, legumes, grains, alcohol, caffeine, and allowing your gut to heal so you can heal the gut lining and then reintroduce things. And so I spent years doing that protocol and I about nine months was really the most impact it ever made. And I started to really feel better. My leg wasn't as numb. I could stand up. I was able to work out. I could work without wanting to die. And I thought, hmm, there's something to this using food as medicine. And then in 2017, I met a functional medicine doctor and he totally changed my world because I walked in there and I got all the tests, stool tests, breath tests, um, you know, all all the blood. I gave him all the blood I had. And we basically realized that I had been misdiagnosed for 13 years and I didn't even have fibromyalgia. I had Epstein-Barr. I had SIBO. I had leaky gut. I had all these microbiome issues. I have the MTHFR genetic mutation and chronic fatigue syndrome. And even having mono, and this is, I'm sure you have heard this a lot, but having mono, you get Epstein-Barr, it's the same thing, right? No one ever tested me for Epstein-Barr in 13 years, even knowing that I had mono. Uh, does that upset you? I, so I, much. I, uh, I mean, do you, uh, like, as an admin, I'm just thinking as somebody who competed on a high level and you find out, you know, I could have played. I, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's, I can't imagine what's going through your head at that point. Yeah. I was really, I was really pissed. I was frustrated. Yeah. I was confused. I thought, how can these doctors that, you know, are such high level world renowned have won awards, not even know to test for a virus that comes with such a common thing of mono. Everyone gets mono. So then that means everyone has Epstein-Barr, but no one's getting tested for it. And what does that even mean? And so when I worked with Dr. Lekos, he um, started treating me from, you know, the core issues, getting to the root cause of everything. And that transformed my life. And we started doing ozone therapy and um, utilizing more of a strict autoimmune protocol and really making sure I was getting enough collagen and turmeric and getting the inflammation and the heat out of my body. And then I introduced Ayurveda, which is very focused on balancing your doshas and your body and making sure that if you have a lot of heat, you're eating cooling foods and really working to get the inflammation out. And so using that combination really allowed me to heal from a really deep cellular level. And then I was able to go back to being more plant-based and I feel so much better because I'm not a vegan, but I do, um, I use, I eat a lot less meat than I used to. And I really focus on nutrient dense vegetables and fruits. And I'm even, I'm even able to have grains and legumes now because I've worked really hard to heal my gut. And so it's just amazing how it comes full circle. And the more work you do to heal on a deep level, the more control you have and the better you feel. And it's just, it's night and day from when I started. That's incredible. And I love how you earlier, you had mentioned just how you and your family, like at that time when you were younger, you know, you trusted that system because that's all that you knew. And like, and I think so many people are in that space, right? It's what we've grown up with. It's what their parents have grown up with is the doctor tells you this, you take this and and that's it. 
but it's it becomes this like cycle of sick antibiotic, sick antibiotic, but are we getting to the cause? And then all of a sudden, all of these antibiotics causes gut health issues that if you don't address them like you did, you're going to have so much chronic issues your entire life and just think that that's something that's genetic or something that you have to deal with the rest of your life and not play on the sports teams and not do this or that. And I just, man, if, you, if you're listening and all of this sounds new to you, like please research everything and dive into it. And the gut, just researching gut health in general is just, it can be life-changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge. And I've learned how much our gut really dictates everything. You know, we think our brains are in charge. No, it's our gut. Our brains can't run without our gut being in check. That's why so many people are so tired, have headaches and all these kinds of issues. Even depression and anxiety can all be linked back to your gut. It has to be the main focus when you start to heal, regardless of what it is that you're dealing with. Exactly. And I mean, I know through this journey, like just learning how important like mind body connection is how it can affect your gut health like you just mentioned and just how powerful it is like did it blow your mind once you started to really dive into how much our thoughts and even things that had happened to us in the past like emotionally how that can all just like you said full circle come around and really affect every aspect of your health yeah you know i didn't really get or understand the mind body connection until the last 16 18 months of my life and it was the last time that my body really shut down um and i had to go on leave from work and i realized that my environment and the stress that i was dealing with and different experiences that had happened throughout my life really impacted the stress levels um, that I was carrying and that stress burden on my body. And so when I started to really get quiet with myself, eliminate all the noise and really start asking myself what it is I need and how am I actually feeling and then making the correlation of, you know, you're working so many hours, you're up late at night, you're not getting sleep, you're in experiences and situations that aren't healthy for you. How is that impacting your body as a whole? And I realize now that even more than food for me is the emotional stress that I am under. And if I can manage that, the food doesn't even affect me as much. I can I can eat pizza and not want to die. If I'm stressed, <laughs> right. though, and I'm in, in an environment that's not healthy for me, having that pizza makes me really sick. And so yeah. I think it's really important to just get quiet, take a step back and look at what your day to day is like and the toxic relationships, the environment, whether it's work or at home, the stress levels you're under, what you're allowing to consume you. And you mentioned the thoughts. Our thoughts are everything and we can beat ourselves up and we can have anxiety about things that haven't even happened. And that really becomes such a heavy burden on your body. And that will take you down. And I've truly believe that if your body is struggling and it's shutting down, which it does so often with chronic illness or cancer or things of that nature, your body is trying to tell you that it can't handle the burden anymore. And you have to t come back to yourself and turn inward and say, what am I doing and how can I support myself? Absolutely. And it's such an important conversation to have, especially for young girls, like if you're a younger girl listening, or if you are a mom and you have young girls, just to be aware of that. Because I mean, Kelly, I, I think we both understand like how this stuff starts at a young age, like kids are mean. And, and I mean, I know that's a cliche statement, but it's really true. And a lot of stuff that you a lot of those stressors you have at a younger age, just continue to cycle throughout your life on some level and just learning that it's important to have the awareness of that. So you can work on it. I mean, it's going to take your health to the next level. And I mean, for you, like, how big of an effect do you think just addressing the emotional health as a kid can be just as you age, like as far as like generational trauma and things mm. like that? Oh, girl it is everything. Um, I think that I went through a lot as a kid in terms of feeling a lot of stress and anxiety from a very young age and feeling this pressure to be perfect. And my parents are so amazing and they did everything they could to make sure that I wasn't so stressed out. I mean, I never even got punished because my parents would always say, you're so hard on yourself. You're harder than we could ever be on you by grounding you or, you know, taking something away. I was so hard on myself. And I look back at that now and I think about how much I beat myself up for not being perfect or doing one little thing wrong. And I, I was so scared to disappoint my parents. I was so scared to feel unworthy and unloved. And it would bring me to tears 
often. And then you look at being suicidal at 12 and skipping a grade because I didn't fit in and just always being the outlier and not knowing my role in this world and not feeling understood or seen. And I wish that I could go back and have the wherewithal to have a conversation with 10 year old me and say, it's okay. It's going to be okay. I understand you don't fit in. I understand that you have these, these feelings that you don't get and that don't really make sense, but it will, it will all come together later. And so now as an adult, I really work on that, the inner child work, and it's something that I'm new to. But for me, I try and I envision the five-year-old version of myself, and I sit with her on the couch, and I ask her what she needs, and I tell her that she is loved, and she's taken care of, and that she doesn't have to be perfect, and that she's doing a great job, and that it's awesome that she's not fitting in, and that it's going to serve her in an amazing way when she's older. And it does make me sad to think back about how much that little girl suffered, but I think we all have some part of us as a child that went through something that we really need to acknowledge now as adults and give ourselves credit for and just show ourselves grace and love. Absolutely. Very, very well said. And like, I mean, do you think that adults don't address that kind of trauma because they're really not aware that they should? Or do you think it's too scary? to address. What's your opinion on that? I So my parents are definitely not spiritually inclined. And I think that that generation, my parents are 62. I think that generation is still of the mindset of brushing things under the rug and not really facing them head on and being, you know, a pillar of strength and moving forward. And I... I just think our generation is looking at things differently and we view mental health so differently in in terms of the stigma that it used to have around it. And, you know, I, I have an episode that's out today with a woman named Hannah Bloom and she lives with bipolar disorder and she saw so many therapists growing up and they kept brushing it off and saying, oh, it's just teenage stuff. Oh, you know, you're just hormonal. It's, you know, you started your period. It's fine. And we brushed it off for so long that I think there's almost this revolt in a way from our generation of saying, oh, no, no, do not tell me that there is it's just part of life. There are things that we go through. There are traumatic experiences, whether you are assaulted, you're molested as a child, you're abandoned, or you have mental health issues that need medication like bipolar disorder. Those are things that we are actually addressing head on now, and we are willing to own it, and we are willing to have a conversation around it. I don't think my parents had the tools to understand what was going on or the fact that stuff that happens as a child truly affects you as adults. And we have to face it and release it and let go and forgive. But I see a generation of parents that are holding on to things in a really big way, and it's a burden on them. So how would they know how to teach us to do any differently? Absolutely. And it's so crucial too, just for just evolving just as a family tree, right? Because, you know, we're talking about generational trauma and like, you have to think like something that maybe your great, great grandma went through that was super stressful and like how that affected her healing and overall who she was as a person, like that passes the next person and that continues to pass. So like the fact that we have the ability to change that pattern and to create just a lineage of healing and not having to deal with so many things that really were literally passed down to us, whether we realize it or not, it's so powerful. And like, and you could even say, I mean, obviously, we're talking about the emotional aspect of it, but that goes for everything that goes for, you know, like how somebody eats, how they move, how they just every aspect of Mm -hmm. wellness, like just the fact that we have the power to really change how that lines up for our kids and their kids and their kids. Like it's just, it's so powerful. Yeah. It's breaking the cycle and it's consciously living our lives in a different way and making different choices. And I think we, we can take a step back and gain perspective and look at what our parents' patterns are and what their parents' patterns were. And I, I do this with my mom and my grandmother. I love them both so much, but they come from a different time and it's, it was more of a survival mode and it was a out of protection and out of keeping everyone happy and this people pleaser mentality. And they really believed that their value was in taking care of other people. And they let themselves, um, you know, fall to the wayside or didn't prioritize themselves because that's how they were raised. And I am so, so passionate about changing that because I don't want to teach my children that their value is in 
taking care of someone else and not taking care of themselves. Because if my cup is not full, I can't take care of other people. And it really, it makes me sad to think that out of survival and, you know, wanting to have a better life, that's what they felt they needed to do. And I am lucky enough to have been raised in a much different household than both my mom and grandmother. And they, you know, my parents, as I said, were so good to me that I don't have to live like that. And I get to change that so that my children don't see that pattern and realize that they have so much to offer the world and they are valuable and they are worthy and they are loved, not just because of what they do for other people. Absolutely. How, like, how has your journey been as far as just the personal development journey, uh, just learning about just overall qualities of yourself? Like, are you a fan of like personality tests or like, what do you, what's your opinion on that? Yes. Oh my gosh. So I'm still relatively new to this world. And it's funny because my, my boyfriend, um, he is, he is so in personal development (laughs) and he actually is like a dating coach and a lifestyle design coach and he works with clients one-on-one. So I, I listen to like his client calls and I hear what he is sharing with people and the way he talks about this. And I'm like, damn, you are so far ahead of me. I don't even know what you're talking about. So I have like a a day-to-day teacher, which is so incredible. I'm so grateful. But I think for me, um, I love the Enneagram test. I took that and I'm a two, which is a helper, which, you know, everything I just said, there you go. Um, But I really think that it helps me understand myself better. And I really believe that if we don't take a hard look at ourselves and get really honest about the things that we don't like about ourselves or the patterns that we want to change, then how are we ever going to grow? And if you're not honest and you're not authentic and you're not real with yourself, how are you ever going to be those things with other people in any kind of relationship or situation? And it doesn't mean that you are married to this, you know, type two on the Enneagram. It doesn't, it doesn't fully explain everything that you're about, but it can give you a better idea of who you are and why you operate the way you do. And what those have done for me is at least help me feel like I'm not crazy. And it makes me feel like, oh, I'm not the only one out there like this. These are the traits that I like about this. These are the traits that I would like to improve or change. And now I have the tools to do so. Whereas before, I I feel like I was walking around blind in the world, no idea as to who I was or how it affected me or other people and why I was like that. And it just, I don't know, it gives me a little bit of peace of mind um, on a day-to-day basis that I'm not totally crazy, just a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's cool. Like uh, the Enneagrams, like that was newer to me. I actually took it for the first time, um, like maybe like two weeks ago. I I didn't even know what it, I didn't even know what it was, but I had heard of like like love languages and like did that and and knew that for sure. But, um, but you're right. It's interesting. And like, it doesn't put you in a box or anything, but it lets you just know like, oh, maybe I do do these actions because of this, or this is Mm -hmm. how I show love. Or like maybe somebody is trying to show love in a certain way, but I'm not accepting it like that just because we have different ways we view that. But no, it's cool. And I like Enneagrams too. Another reason why, because it shows you the extremes on both ends, right? So if you are like, if you start to kind of spiral in a bad direction with it, what your life could actually look like or habits that you could start to pick up. And like, it's kind of scary to see that. But at the same time, you understand how it can lead to that direction, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And I think, you know, it's about being able to have conversations and communicate in a higher level in a different way. And Connor and I were were laying together last night and I said, um, you know, I've never communicated some with someone like I have with you. And I told him because he was kind of making fun of, fun of me because I was being sassy and kind of bratty. <laughs> and um, I love when he calls me out. And I was just like, you know what? I want you to know that I am feeling a lot of anger and a lot of fear this week. And it is coming out in that sass and that brattiness. And I know that I need to cry in order to move through this feeling, but I can't cry. Something is keeping me back from that. So I'm in a mood this week and that is why. And how powerful and incredible is that, that I'm able to verbalize that to him. And he just looked at me and he was like, that makes it so much easier that I know what's going on (laughs) for you. I didn't have the tools to do that a year ago or throughout college when I was just being crazy and had no idea why. Um, now I know what it means for me to cry, why I hold things in and what is actually causing my fear and my anxiety and my sadness. And I can communicate that with my partner so that we can be better together and he can understand, okay, she's having a week. I just need to be here, support her, hold space. It has nothing to do with me and she just needs to go through this rather than him then thinking, okay, what did I do? What's wrong? Are we okay? And it just sends you in the spiral and it's just unnecessary. 
It is. It's like just next level awareness. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I love it. I love it. So I want you to share about what you're doing with your podcast because I love it and you're doing an amazing job, by the way. I think it's incredible. And uh, yeah, so I guess when on the timeline did that start? You know, what inspired it and just how it's been going so far? Thank you. Thank you. That's so sweet. I so I had wanted to have my own show for a while and working in sports, as you can imagine, you kind of get pigeonholed because if you're a sideline reporter, you interview players during or after the game and you ask specific questions about what happened in the game. And that's a bulk of what I was doing. But I had a few opportunities to sit down with people like Magic Johnson and Landon Donovan. And I got to ask these absolute legends and two of the greatest athletes of all time questions. Questions I wanted to ask that were personal and focused on what drove them and how they felt about things and why they made certain decisions and how they would describe themselves and all those types of things. And I started to get this itch to do it more. And I just didn't have the opportunities. And I kept thinking, okay, if I had my own show, what would I want to do? And originally it was talking to athletes in that way about what drives them, the hardest things they've been through, obstacles, how they overcome them and their mindset. And then as I spent more time thinking about it and realizing, you know, my chronic health battle is something that has been going for half my life, how could I support other people in pre- providing resources and conversations that could help them in ways that I wish I had had? And so I really changed my tune. And when I left my job last year, I pushed the podcast into being female focused and driven, talking about how to heal in a variety of ways, um, specifically support around chronic illness and alternative medicine and the mind-body connection. And I started getting guests on the show that are such game changers and have either been through their own chronic illness journeys or are founders of non-toxic companies, um, and maybe both. The the woman I talked to from Indy Lee, she had had a brain tumor and was given six months to live. She created a non-toxic beauty company and she's alive today and kicking awesome. ass. And so uh, I, I just thought, wow, these are women that inspire me every single day and I get to have them in my community and talk to them. And then we get to help just like you do with your show. We get to help other people realize you can use food as medicine. You can use alternative methods of functional movement and chiropractic or energy healing, and all these things that I never knew about growing up and how that can help us heal on a very deep level. And then all the emotional work that you and I were just talking about and what that means and the impact it has. And we have created such a beautiful community of people that are so open and want to learn and are just having these eye-opening experiences with our guests that they never knew were possible. And they're really questioning the norm and and they want more for their lives and for their health. And it's been so fun. And I love what I get to do every day. And um, yeah, it's just, it's been really powerful and, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Oh, I love that. And I mean, obviously, the audience is learning a lot, but so are you, right? Like yes. it's helping you along your journey. So for you personally, maybe what is one of the biggest takeaways that you've taken away personally from a guest? I'm sure there's been a lot, but if you if one just comes to mind, maybe something that's really like just hit you really hard maybe during a conversation on your show. Yeah. You know, what was super cool. There's this woman, her name is Dr. Patty Fletcher. And I read her book disruptors while I was on leave from work and really sick. And I was looking for inspiration to get my ass off the couch because I was really (laughs) in a dark place. And I read her book twice and I was so just touched and inspired at the way she talked about women disrupting their fields, but doing so in a way that supported other women and breaking the mold and laying out the path for the next generation and changing the way we talk about supporting each other. It doesn't need to be a competition and we only rise if we rise together. There is no individual rising. And I just thought that was so incredible. And so I reached out to her team and This is before I ever even launched the show and immediately had the support of Patty and her um, business partner, Heather. And when she came on the show, 
I had I had her book in my hand. I had highlighted everything. I took such intense notes. I flew to Boston <laughs> to interview her. Like this was more than Magic Johnson. This was like the interview of a lifetime for me. And I was freaking prepared. And you know what happened? We start talking and I had no idea it was going to go there, but we started talking about ancestral trauma and how she has spoken to relatives that have passed on and the spirits are in her life and how everything she does is because um, she had an encounter with her, aunt, her great aunt and some other relatives that she had never met and they had been through the Armenian genocide uh, genocide and they came to her and in a vision and spoke to her and told her she needed to do this work for them basically to heal generational trauma and to speak in a way that they were never allowed to and I was sitting there it, tears in my eyes thinking how <laughs> in God's name <laughs> did I get this to happen like right. it was so crazy and I was so grateful and she had never talked about that publicly before and I just I was so grateful that she trusted me in that way but I thought holy crap I must be on to something because this is the coolest conversation ever and this is not who I expected to have this conversation with right that's amazing it's I love that so much you know it's cool whenever you start to notice that like when you are like on the right path of where you're supposed to be just how everything just happens so much easier than expected and just feels right and I'm sure you've noticed that just throughout your just you know with your switching with career like it just feels more in alignment with what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that you say that because I remember going through sports for 10 plus years in television, I was constantly trying to force things and I felt like, okay, if I get this job, then I'll, I'll make it. And then I can get this one and I'm going to try and force this situation. And it, it never worked. I kept running into roadblocks and I was just like, God, this is so hard. And I did have a lot of success, but it wasn't the way I thought it was going to happen. And I was constantly just fighting. And then when I started the podcast, I'm, it's just like with Dr. Fletcher, every single person I emailed, no matter how big they were, they all said yes. And they were all supportive. And I flew all over the country interviewing these incredible people and everything just was so smooth and it just happened. And I thought clearly this is how it's supposed to be. This, it doesn't, life doesn't need to be a freaking battle all the time. And I think we think it does. And so we create drama and chaos and We put ourselves in circumstances where we're constantly having to fight. And it's the same with my health, same with my career, same with relationships. I was just fighting all the time. And it's when I took a step back and I really got quiet and I allowed everything in my life to be in alignment and just feel through it rather than force it with my mind. I felt through it with my heart and everything just flows. And there is something so powerful in that. And I'm just bummed that I didn't realize that 10 years ago. (laughs) Hey, you had to go through experiences to get there though. And it's like, I mean, you take, you're taking like, you have so much skills in in the broadcasting world and just being in that field. Like, I mean, obviously it's carrying over to what you're doing now Mm. though. So it's like, you need all those steps though. Yeah, no, I'm so glad that I spent so much time in TV because I now putting together a show, I'm able to produce it. I'm able to put the creative side in. I know what it should sound like and feel like. And I know, you know, what a great soundbite is. I know how to interview people. It's it's easy for me because I've been doing it for so long. And I have that curiosity reporter side of me. And I wouldn't be able to do any of this without all of that. And so, yes, I am really grateful for all those moments of learning in that career because I really, truly feel that it was getting me ready to step into this and and really live my purpose. I love it. And you're doing an amazing job. Thank and you. I'm excited for you because you're getting ready to have your ceremony wellness live. So you yes. want to talk about what that is? Because like I saw it and I'm like, that's amazing. Thank that's, you. Yes. Oh, I want you to come. It'll be oh, so when, fun. When is it? It's October 5th in LA. Um, and we have people flying in from all over the country. Um, but you and I should talk because I have some ideas. But um, oh, it's going to be a really, really special day. So basically, what I have realized is that people, and I'm sure you feel this too, people that listen to the show, they always want to meet my guests or they want to connect with them. And we have people all over the country listening and they don't necessarily have access. And how many days do we have to give to go see healer after healer or doctor? And I thought, okay, what if I get everyone in one room? And so I've put together all of my best guests and the people that have changed my life in really profound ways. And we are spending an entire day together and we'll have speakers. We're going to have different workshops where you can work with different healers that are in the room. And I'll be talking about my journey and some other things. And I just, I'm so excited to be in one room where people can learn 
so much in one day. They can connect in a community that really understands them and sees them without judgment. And we can all become better versions of ourselves. And we just found the venue yesterday, actually, and it's nice. so rad. And it's just going to be really fun. I'm, I'm super excited. So if anyone wants to come, you can go to kellytenant.com slash live and get your tickets. Um, and it'll be really, really fun. Kelly, the energy of that room is going to be insane. I know. I'm so excited. Ah, that's amazing. <laughs> yes. No, please. And guys, I'll put a, um, a link in the show notes. That way, if you guys want to go check it out, get more info about the event and also subscribe to her podcast as well, go do that. And also write her a good review on the podcast because that really helps get more eyes and ears over to the show. So be sure to go do that. And yeah, so is there anything else going on in the future? Um, I know the event is, is a big one for you and just continuing to work on the podcast, but is there anything that you're working on that you just want to put out there and uh, share? You know, we have a journal that I'm really passionate about, and I think that journaling has changed my life so much in the last six months. And it, we talked about getting quiet and really focusing on what it is that we need. And the journal we created is all about the mind body connection. And it's a very simple tool that you can use for five, 10 minutes a day. And it has prompts in it. And it helps you talk through with yourself, what you're manifesting, what you want to let go of, how you're surrendering to what's happening, how you're feeling physically, what's happening emotionally in your life that is affecting that so that you can see patterns that show up in your day on a day-to-day basis that are affecting you over time. And so often I think we have all these thoughts in our head and we can't really understand what's going on because there's a million of them every day. And when I started writing things down, I started realizing what was really occupying my time and the space in my body. And I've been able to let go of a lot of that and just get more clear. And I have more of a clear channel for myself to feel through things and not be bogged down by what everyone else says and wants for me, but it's all driven by how I feel and what I want. And So I highly recommend, even if you don't use our journal, just journaling every day can make a profound impact on your health and just your mindset. And I find that I'm so much more calm and happy when I journal and when I take time for myself. Absolutely. No, I 100% agree with that. That's been crucial for my own journey as well. Just writing it down, writing down the goals, making it like something you see and read every day. It's just it's incredible. And like, what is, can they find the journal on your website? Yeah. If you go to kellytenant.com slash journal, you can find it there. Awesome. And then what is the best way, Kelly, for people to find you on social media? Yes. On Instagram, I am at Kelly M. Tenant, And our ceremony wellness Instagram is also up there. Awesome. And Kelly, just closing question that I ask every guest. But if you just had one piece of advice for the audience, maybe it's been your biggest takeaway on your wellness journey so far. But if you just had one piece of advice to give, what would it be? Choose yourself. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Kelly, I love the work you're doing. And just again, thank you so much for taking the time. Guys, please go give her a follow. Go listen to our podcast, subscribe, write an incredible review. And just Kelly, thank you for all that you do. Really appreciate having you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you loved my conversation with Kelly. She's doing so much positive work. So be sure to go give her a follow on social media to keep up with everything that she's been working on. You can find her social media links that we talked about in the episode in the show notes, but you can also find them on my website as well at drkaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N.com. Click on the Listen tab. Then from there, you'll be able to see all of the past guests that have come on the Unlock Wellness podcast, read a little bit about each guest, and be able to click on their social media links, websites, all of that. So All of Kelly's information can be found on my site as well. If you guys loved today's episode with Kelly, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you loved it. I hope it inspires you. And most importantly, I hope you take action.